All right, today I'm gonna to be reacting to Rubber Soul by The Beatles. Now, The Beatles feel like a band that I probably should have already reacted to at this point, but I just haven't gotten around to it. I've heard Abbey Road by The Beatles. That's the only other album that I've heard. So I'm really excited to get into this. This came out four years before Abbey Road. I believe this is like their first kind of well-known record at least that's what i can tell from what i'm looking at here because before this i mean there was albums that aren't really talked about when it comes to the beatles it looks like all the ones that are heavily talked about come after this album so yeah i'm excited to get into this uh i don't have too much to say i don't have too many expectations i mean i loved abbey road that was a, a fantastic listen and i'm kind of bummed that i didn't react to it yeah we're gonna get into this make sure to go join the patreon if you want to see this reaction uncut link in the description down below and the first track is drive my car let's go <laughs> Nice harmonies there. I love how we've had that like cowbell, I guess it is, throughout the entire track, just still there. Damn, that was a short one. Okay, I feel like at this time, you don't really get tracks that are that brief, but... I kind of like it. This next track, too, is only, like, two minutes. So, interesting, interesting start there. Fun track. Catchy. Good guitar work. Good harmonies. Uh, I liked kind of how harsh the vocals were mixed on that. Like, at times, they got a lot cleaner. But there was times where it was uh, a lot more harsh than you think you would hear on a Beatles record. So, didn't, like, blow my mind or anything. But just a, a fun start to this, to this record. Let's keep going. Norwegian Wood, The Bird Has Flown. Or This Bird Has Flown. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, nice intensity to that that playing there. Ooh, the harmonica? Okay. Wait, no. That's not a harmonica. God, that guitar is mixed so nicely. Oh my god. Such a good melody. Wow. Dude, I love that melody. Such a such a well constructed melody. Dude, the guitars on this album are sounding fantastic so far. Just the mixing and production in general. Uh let's keep going. I don't got too much to say about it. Let's just let's see what we got next. When I call you up, that was so hard to find. I like the placement of everything here. Like the vocals completely on the right. Pretty much all the instrumentation on the left. Ooh. Feels like we're kind of slowing down here. See what I mean here with this slowdown? Oh. It's very subtle, but... This whole track feels kind of drunk and lazy and like it's kind of stumbling over itself. Dude, such an interesting tone to that track. Like, it feels on the surface very joyous and happy because of the everything that's going into it, like the, the ooh-la-las, you know? But those subtle slowdowns, those little moments where they go to the minor chord, feels a bit unsettled, a bit uncomfortable, and like I said, the whole track just feels kind of drunk and, like, stumbling over itself. And it makes sense with what they're singing about here. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's keep going. Next up is Nowhere Man. I like the bass on this one. Oh, nice. Whoa. That, that guitar tone is very like the Smiths. And it feels really, really ahead of its time. This does because of that. Like, I feel like you don't usually hear guitar tones like that especially in the 60s. I love how loose this vocal, like, rhythm is. Dude. 
I'm really loving how loose these tracks are. Like they could be a lot tighter, but it would make it feel just more touched up and polished, which I don't think is what you necessarily want here. Like the, the grooves are so loose and the way they're singing over top of this, it's kind of labored in a way. And it's, it's very, very lazy. And I say lazy, not as a bad thing. Like it's purposefully kind of behind the beat, you know? I'm trying to remember if Abbey Road felt a little bit tighter in terms of the performances, but I think it is, it feel, that one felt a little bit more tight. But yeah, the, I, again, I'm just, I'm loving that. It feels really unique. Yeah, let's keep going. Think for yourself. To say about the things that you do, do what you want to do. Oh, nice. I love that, dude. I love that kind of fill there. It's so good. Dude, there's something about these melodies that are just doing it for me. Like, the, where, okay, wait, what was it? I love the ooh, instead of just going, I'll be there with you. Like, that feels like the more obvious choice, but then just adding that little ooh. Such a nice little touch. It's a simple thing, but adds a lot. That one wasn't one of my favorites so far, but again, it's, <laughs> I'm just... I'm shocked at how loose this is. It's so, it's kind of crazy. It's a lot less polished and touched up than I thought it would be. Next is The Word. Dude, I love how these tracks just start too. <laughs> like they don't waste any time. They just get right into it. Ooh. Woo! Did you hear that fill, dude? That was crazy. Oh, you hear that high harmony? Woo. Dude, that's one of my favorites. That probably is my favorite so far. That was so good. Harmonies in there were crazy. Love the bass line. Just love the, the persistent groove to that track. And those fills were great. I love how like dusty the drums sounded on that track. Yeah, it was fantastic. That was easily my favorite. Let's keep going. Michelle is next. I wonder, yeah, if we're gonna get like a ballad at some point. Nice muted guitar on the left here. Here's those subtle slowdowns. I like that contrast of that really like sharp acoustic and then this muted guitar on the left here that was good it started out as i wasn't loving it when it started out um but it was really cool to hear those vocals without all the vocal layering you know just the the single vocal by itself and it was a really really impressive vocal performance too of course like a lot more minimalistic and stripped back than most of these but um i like the writing a lot it was good let's keep going what goes on is next I love how that this guitar just really bites through the entire mix at points. Like in popular music now, like especially just like a straight up pop song, if you had a guitar in it, you'd never hear it getting this harsh and kind of shrill, but it just adds so much character to it. Eh. That's kind of boring, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Like... That felt like the most formulaic and just like they're kind of playing it safe musically on that track. Really nothing that that interesting. So other than that one little moment I said where the guitar is like really piercing through uh, the mix. Just just not much that stood out. So definitely the weakest so far. Girl is next. Is there anybody going to listen to my story? Oh, the breathing in. Was she told when she was young that pain would lead to pleasure? 
We go from one of the most boring tracks musically to one of the most interesting on the album. That was fantastic. I love the breaths. I love just the the tempo of that and just the chill kind of meandering kind of vibe to it. Yeah, and that section with the the, the guitar and the crash at the end. Really, really unexpected. All right, let's keep going. I'm looking through you. I'm looking through you. Okay, the claps. Oh, good vocals. Woo! You don't sound different. I've learned the game. Love that. Love how dissonant that is. You were above me, and you know where. It only really works going into that dissonant section because of the harsh vocals leading up to it. You know, it's a perfect transition. You don't look different, but you. That's a good line. Dude, that's a good line. What was it? You don't look different, but you've changed. I mean, it's simple, but it just like, it gets across the point so effectively. Really, really interesting musically again with that dissonant like Good vocal performance again. Vocals are really, really standing out on this album. I think they were good on Abbey Road, but they feel even more, more standout on this album. And one thing I will say, this album feels more just like straightforward and poppy than Abbey Road did. Abbey Road, I think, had more like definitely longer tracks and tracks that were a little bit more adventurous like structurally but i love the simplicity here of just like getting straight into the track it doesn't really waste that much time it just gets right into it and it's a little bit more just simple but there's still some some really cool musical ideas going on here it's simple but it's not sacrificing the quality i don't think it's still uh it's still fantastic yeah the performances are great here i'm again just loving how loose everything feels next track is in my life which has 450 million streams so maybe I've heard this. Let's see. There are places I remember. All these places have their moments. Mm, like the percussion here. Mm. Ooh. I know I'll often stop and think about them. That was good. I was like ready to kind of hate on it. Cause I'm such a contrarian, guys. I was ready to hate on it because it's like the most streamed on this album. But no, it was seriously good. I love the switch ups of percussion. Like it's, it's so simple, but it's like, I don't know. It just works. Fantastic vocal performance again. I'm actually, I'm kind of surprised that one is the most streamed. It doesn't feel like it would be, but I don't know. I liked it. Let's keep going. Wait is next. Mm, Spotify is going to make me wait. To hear this song because they suck and they won't play it. It's been there we a go. long time. Now I'm coming back home. Wait till I come oh. back to your side. You ought to know. Dude. I've been good. I love the Larry the the composition of this track. I love how everything's coming in in such a like unexpected way. This oh this chorus is so good. But I've been good as good as I can be. Dude, this reminds me of something. Ugh. It's been a long time. Now I'm coming back home. No. Yes. Let's go, dude. Let's go. That chorus was one of my favorite. No, that chorus is my favorite part of the album so far. That was so good, dude. I was like trying to pinpoint what that reminds me of, but then I realized like <laughs> there's the Beatles have so much influence on music that comes after them that pretty much everything here is going to remind me of something else you know so it doesn't even really matter that was one of, again one of those tracks that was so like harsh and kind of abrasive in a way but still really pretty at the same time so yeah i loved it let's keep going two more tracks if i needed someone if i had some more time to stay oh I'd those harmonies dude. Mm. 
This is weirdly reminding me of Radiohead, like in Rainbows era Radiohead. I don't know why. I think it's the way that the guitars are just being, the way the guitars are working together in a way. Dang, dude. That was a very, like, psychedelic track in a way. Um, I love just, like, the shots of the uh, vocals and then the other guitar coming in and just working as a really nice, like, pair to the other guitar and just, again, creating this very, like, kaleidoscopic kind of psychedelic feel. That's why it reminded me of kind of In Rainbows era Radiohead. Like, obviously, aesthetically, it's very different, but, like, the spirit of it kind of felt the same. All right, last track is Run For Your Life. The end. You know this was super edgy at the time. When this came out, people were probably freaking out. Okay. A track that, like I said, feels like it was probably very edgy at the time that it came out with what they're talking about lyrically here. Uh, but I feel like it, they kind of make it known that it's they're not taking this too seriously with the way that they say, that's the end. Uh, if it didn't have that, honestly, this track would come off a lot creepier and scary than it does. I like it. I can see why some people would maybe be like offended by this track or something, but I don't know. It feels like it's kind of tongue in cheek and it's not taking itself too seriously. So there you go. That is Rubber Soul by the Beatles. Like I said, a lot more straightforward then Abbey Road and a lot of really quick tracks. I think every track is pretty much every track is under three minutes. There's one that's over, but they just kind of get straight to the point. It's very catchy, but it doesn't, it also doesn't sacrifice having those interesting elements as well. Really enjoyed it overall. A couple of tracks that felt a little bit underwhelming. Again, love how loose it is, loose it feels, love how harsh and abrasive it feels at times. I didn't really pay attention to the writing that much, but I kind of just wanted to let the music itself hit me, so I'll probably go back to the lyrics on uh, future listens. But yeah, that's going to do it. Those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below, and uh, yeah, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.